Good morning, everyone. So we proceed with the second lecture by Denis Gaetzgori from Harvard on geometric lens. Denis. Thank you very much. All right, let me briefly recap what happened last time. All right, so we are considering a curve X, smooth projective curve, G is over some field K, G is reductive group, and so if you fix a point X on the curve, we have this picture that we call the Hecke stack. So. And so this diagram downstairs is a groupoid and both squares are Cartesian, which kind of encapsulates the fact that this groupoid acts upstairs, it acts on bungee. And so we use this diagram in both function theoretic setting and the sheep theoretic setting. So in the function theoretic setting, it allows us, allowed us to have an action of the convolution algebra, right? so these functions with compact supports on this double quotient. Again, it's an algebra with respect to convolution. It's acted on functions with compact supports on FQ points of Bungie. And so moreover, we had Satake that described to us what this algebra was. So it says that so we have a canonical isomorphism between the K group of representations of the Langlands dual tensored with our field of coefficients, which we take to be Q L bar with functions on this double quotient. So in particular, irreducible representations of the Langlands dual group give rise to elements of this algebra. And in particular, sorry, just if you look at this diagram, you obtain this operators for, so for every X and every representation of Langlands dual group. You obtain this Hecke operator we call the TVX. So it's an acting on functions with compact support. So this is the Hecke operator. And then we said that we were looking for a commutative algebra that can possibly incorporate all of these actions and the uh, the clue would be that if you look at the spectrum of this algebra these operators this element well each of the symbols tvx is supposed to be a function on the spectrum and we said that so a guess would be as follows so let's take the spectrum to be Galois representations. I'll denote it log sif on the curve X, and I'll say I'll put the subscript arithmetic um, to emphasize that we are over FQ and not FQ bar. So let me just roughly say so it's the stack of G check local systems. on X over FQ. So then when I say local system, uh, so you can think of it in either two equivalent ways, either it's um, homomorphism from pi one of X to G check up to conjugation, or there is a Tanakin, so call it, call it Sigma perspective. You can think of it of as a symmetric monoidal functor from representations of the Langlands dual group to the category of, so let me call it QL bar, uh, eladic local systems on the curve. So let me call it, so we have this notation for eladic sheaves, but on the curve, and I put here the subscript lease, which means that to emphasize that these are local systems. So it's called, maybe called it F sub sigma 
M sigma is a symmetric monoidal pump curve. So, but so far I described it, if you wish, as a groupoid. So arithmetic local systems. I haven't given given you yet the algebra geometric structure, but I will do it um, a little bit later today. But let me say that so. I explained it last time by taking the trace of the Frobenius. So, uh, so t of x gives rise to a function, let me call it a v x. It's a section of the structure sheet. So, which again, I'll explain the algebra geometric structure later. And so the theorem of Vincent Laforgue says that, and it's a really deep theorem that says that, so these actions that were of the Hecke operators indeed assemble to an action of this entire algebra. So there exists canonically defined action of this algebra. Local functions, this the stack of arithmetic local systems on uh, the space of compactly supported functions. So that the elements A, V, X act as the Hecke operators T, V, X. And I should emphasize that this theorem even deeper than it seems because, so for groups other than the general linear group, uh, this elements AVX do not generate this algebra. So, uh, so in his work, Lavorg had to construct more operators that act in the space of automorphic functions to create this action of the algebra. So it's not only the question of that this, T, this operators TVX satisfy the relations, which is in itself very non-trivial, but there are not enough of them to generate the entire algebra. All right, so that's the function theoretic part of what I was going to say, of what I said last time. And so another thing that I mentioned is that we'll now use the same geometric diagram to consider an action of the categorical setting. So we'll now, so I again quote geometric attack. And it says that there is a canonical monoidal functor from now the category representations of Langlands dual group, no longer its K group, to the category of sheaves on this double quotient. And again, it can, so the sheaf theoretic context can be anything. I don't specify it. It can be Eladic, it can be um, Betty, it can be Derome. And that allows us to introduce functors. Um, so I denote them by the same letter. So for every V representation of Langlois dual group, we have this functor TVX that acts on sheaves on Bungie to itself. And now we are trying to play the similar trick. We're trying to uh, organize these uh, functors that pairwise commute to an, into an action of what would be an analog of commutative algebra, but we, but we are now one categorical level higher. So we are seeking uh, an action of the category of quasi coherent sheaves on some geometric object. And again, the guess is that the geometric object is the is the same look cis, but I have to I'll have to elaborate on what it is, and it, it'll start doing it in a few minutes. So it's some algebra geometric object attached to our particular shift theoretic context. And so what we want is to have, so whatever it is, it will be an object such that uh, for each index V, there will be uh, a particular quasi in sheet, in, in fact, a vector bundle, I called it EVX here. And so what we want is that, uh, so the 
category of quasi-coherent sheaves on the stack of local systems, viewed as a monoidal category, acts on sheaves on Banji. And again, note that the sheaves are in very different sense. So the left-hand side, it's the category of quasi-coherent sheaves, sheaves over this stack of local systems, but the stack of local systems is an algebra geometric object over our field of coefficients. And Banji is a field over is an algebra geometric object over the ground field, but the category of sheaves is again a category linear over the same field of coefficients. But sheaves are understood very differently. So um, kind of on Banji, these are something like elatic sheaves. And on, on Loxis, it's quasi-coherent sheaves. So we want to have this action so that uh, these particular objects act as the Hecke-Fonkers TBX. But so now we are really inside algebraic geometry, and I have to specify what I mean by stack of uh, by the stack of local systems, and that will differ very significantly depending on the shift theoretic context. So that was the review of last time, and let me pause briefly for questions. Can somebody please ask a very naive question so that I know the people listening? In the in the theorem of Vincent Laforgue, um, is it also are there other um, uh, bundles that are interesting to consider as coefficients other than the structure sheaf? Very much so. So and. Uh, We'll get there in a, in a few minutes. But Wushu, thank you so, so much for your question. Thank you. All right. So now let's talk about this log sys. And we'll talk about it in, in the three different sheaf theoretic contexts that I mentioned. And one, the first one will be Deram. So we're looking at Deram local systems. And let me say what log sys Deram is. So it's an algebra geometric object. So the RAM, we work over a ground, the ground field K of characteristic zero, and the coefficients is the same field K. So, so let me define this algebra geometric object. So I have to say what forms from a test, a fine test scheme S uh, to Loxis, check the RAM of axis. And that is the following thing. So these are, so it's a groupoid, it's a symmetric monoidal functors. From the category of rep you check. So remember, when we talked about just local systems point-wise, the, the Tanakian perspective, these were symmetric monoidal functors. So these are still symmetric monoidal functors, but with values where? So a proper way to write it would be the following. I should take the category of D modules on the curve, tensored with the category of quasi-coherent sheaves on S. So here I'm using kind of the world of higher categories where if you have two linear categories, you can tensor them together. So that said, in this particular case, it's very easy to explain what the tensor product is. And in fact, the general definition extra is extrapolated from this. Uh, setting. So if S, so S was an affine scheme, it's spec A. So this category is the same thing as follows. You consider the category of D modules and you consider objects there equipped with an action of A. So it's A mod within D mod X. And so if you take S to be uh, the spectrum of the field, you will just get symmetric monoidal functors from rep G check to D mod, which is the original definition of local systems. All right. Um, and so basically, I'll start already answering Wushi's question. So indeed, if you have a representation of G check, uh, and if you fix a point, so you can take the value of this functor and restrict to the point, you'll get um, symmetric monoidal functor from rep G check to quasi coherent sheaves on S for every S. And so that is to say that, so this pair 
the x indeed gives rise to this quasi gauge sheaf EVX um, on log sys. So, Wushi, this is an example of an object that you will you want to consider. And kind of the main thing is that these objects generate the entire category. Okay. So, however, one can say a little bit more. So here we did something brutal. Namely, we restricted to a particular point X. But as Grothendieck taught us, it's a much better idea to let the point X vary. And what you get, if you let it vary, so you'll get this object EV, which is an object in the tensor product. So it's, it's an object in the tensor product category of D modules on the curve. I will write this way, the tensor product quasi coherent sheaves on the stack of local systems tensor d modules on the curve and so here i am appealing to the notion of tensor product of categories and it's kind of unavoidable here so this so before instead of the stack of local systems we had an affine scheme s and you could get away by just replacing by a modules and here you cannot do this so that is to say if you want to do this kind of theory you have to learn higher categories so in particular how to transfer categories together all right um okay but now let's see so i expressed a wish so i said that we want to have an action uh, of this category demons on bungee so let's see kind of what we have and what we want so here's what we have we have this hecke functors so when the point x is fixed these are and the functors of the category of sheaves well in this case these are d modules on the curve and when the the point is not fixed we have functors let me call them just tv so they go they go from d modules on bungee to d modules on bungee times x so just let you know Point of the application of the of the Hecke functor B parameter, so you get a demo on the product. And here we're getting, okay, that's what you have. So and now let's see what we want. So we so what we want is we want to have an action of quasi coherent sheaves on this object on bungee. Oh, sorry, on D modules on bungee. So that now let's see what happens. So I want to act by this EV and have the same result as TV. So we say that so quasi coherent sheaves act on D modules when they act by this EV. Where, where do you get? So this EV, if you have such an action, is a functor from D modules on Bungie to the tensor product category. D modules on Bungie times D modules on the curve. So, and we have a slight discrepancy. So the first kind of, for TV, the target was D modules of the product and here, and for EV, the target was the tensor product of categories, but we have a natural functor from the latter to the former, this, the external tensor product. And now we have the following basic lemma and it's a specifics of the category of D modules. And this basically every kind of the central part over every, over which everything revolves in different sheaves theories. It says that if you have two algebra geometric objects, algebra geometric objects y1 and y2 under some very mild conditions, d modules on one tensored as a category with d modules on the other maps isomorphically to d modules on the product. And that's basically the fact that so the definition of tensor product is rigged in the following way. If you have two associative algebras, b1 and b2, b1 mod tensor b2 mod is a category which is more or less by definition tensor modules over the tensor product of algebras and d modules up to some simplification procedure is modules over an algebra so and this fact is responsible for this for this equivalence so indeed so in the d module context so tv and ev have the same target so therefore so the wish we expressed is well posed and you can ask 
if this wish is satisfied, and indeed it is satisfied, but it's a pretty hard theorem. So it's a theorem of uh, Gentiles and myself that says from uh, 10 years ago, that says that indeed we do have such an action. So there exists a unique action of quasi gear sheaves of Loxis, Jicek, Deron on D modulus and Banji so that uh, TV acts as EV. So and this is so this is the speckle decomposition theorem uh, in the context of B modules. And what it says, so you can read it as follows that so the category of all the category of D modules on Banji spectrally decomposes over the stack of the, the RAM local systems. So then one can talk about if D modules on Banji is equivalent to something, and that's but that's different, that's a different issue. All right, so now we have two speckle decomposition theorems on the on the board. One is the Vincent Laforgue's theorem that says that a certain sp space of automorphic function spectrally decomposes over, well, the coarse moduli space of arithmetic local systems. So, and here we have a demodule version about spectral decomposition of the category. And so what I want to do, I want to find a common denominator between these two assertions. All right, so that was the Durham story. And now the next will be an approximation to this Aladdic story, but we'll first do the Betty story, which is where your ground field is complex numbers and coefficients is any field of characteristic zero, call it E. Coefficients, call it E. Just consider sheets of vector spaces with E coefficients. But again, I'll stop for questions and I really want somebody to ask a question. I could not hear that. There was uh could you please repeat the question because there was um Can you hear me? I'm not sure if my audio is good. So there's something wrong with the audio. Maybe in the chat. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So maybe you can type the question in the chat. Maybe someone else wants to ask a question. All right. For now, let me proceed for a few minutes with um, Betty's story. So we now look. So different sheet theory. It's Betty sheaves, and I'll define Lox's Betty uh, G of X. So again, I have to tell you what S points are. When again, S is a scheme over the field of coefficients, which is E. So home from S, so S is before spec A, to Lox's Betty. Reads just as before the symmetric monoidal functors from rep G check to the following. So it'll be just as we wrote before, it'll be uh, quasi coherent sheaves on S times tensor Betty sheaves, which means just all topological sheaves on X. And you can also write it as A mod. on X, where S is spec A. Uh, just I want to warn you that there will be an unpleasant surprise in a few minutes. And just as before, same story. So for if you have a V and X, you have this well-defined vector bundle on Log C, you check 
Betty. And as you let the point X vary, you get an object in the tensor product category. So it will be twice the coherent sheep. times the category Betty Sheaves on X. And now let's express the same wish, but I'm just warning you that wish will not be realized as is. So what do we have? So we have, as before, we have the Hecke functor. So we have Sheaves Betty on Bungi, and the Hecke functor that goes to Sheaves Betty Bungie times the curve. And what we want, we want to have an action of the category of quasi coherent sheaves on the slope says Betty, Betty on Bungie in such a way that this functor gets identified with the functor of, tens of the action of EV. And that's the functor that takes values in. Betty, Banji, Tensor, Sheaves, Betty, uh, on the product. And now, an unpleasant surprise. Unlike the category D modules, she Betty Sheaves on the product is not at all the same thing as Betty Sheaves on uh, the tensor product of Betty Sheaves. So we do have a fully faithful functor So it's fully faithful, but not at all an equivalence. And you can see also see the obstruction for it being an, an equivalence, namely Betty Sheaves have singular support, which is a a conical subset of the cotangent bundle. And if something is in the tensor product category, it's, its singular support is something in the cotangent bundle of one times something in the cotangent bundle of, of, of by two. But not everything in the cotangent bundle of y one, y one times by two is the product. Not every Lagrangian is its product. For example, you can take y one equal to y two being so a one. So a fine line, and then if you take the um, constant sheep on the diagonal copy, so Betty sheaf on the product, it's not at all in the image of this external tensor product functor. So something is fishy here. So that's, that's not gonna work. Moreover, you can say something more. So this EV belongs not just to the tensor product, it's actually along the second factor, it's least. It's actually a local system. Infinite dimensional, but, but still a local system. So here we are blending. So therefore, like this wish as it is cannot be realized. So and let's so let's trim our wish and let's say, okay, but let's consider not all of Betty Shoes and Banji, but only those that if I apply the Hecke functor they land in this full subcategory here. So, and now comes a non-trivial theorem. So it has two directions. So one is uh, Nadler, uh, Jibe Yun, and the other direction is uh, in our paper. So it's, um, it's, Arinkin, Kajdan, uh, Raskin, Rosenblum, and Varshavki, which says the following thing. So an object in Betty Sheaves on Banji has the property that this Hecke functors Send, him, send it to the, this tensor product if and only if F has what's called an important singular support. So 
So, so let me just brief reminder. So if, if you are in the Betty theory, if you have an object, Uh, of the beta category to it, you can attach its singular support, which is Lagrangian inside the cotangent bundle of Y. So our Y is band G. Its cotangent bundle is what's called um, its Higgs bundles. And inside Higgs bundles, there is a distinguished conical subset called, called the nilpotent cone, the global nilpotent cone. And so the condition here is that so this can only have Hecke found to send you to the right category if and only if your sheet has an important singular support. So therefore, here's a trimmed wish. So instead of all beta sheaves on Bungi, let's consider sheaves with an important singular support. And let's ask, do we have Hecke action in this case? And in this case we do, and it's um, a pretty easy topological theorem. So it's theorem, this is nadler yun I'll comment on it in a second that there exists a uniquely defined action of the category of quasi curing sheaves uh, Betty on X. On now, not all Betty sheaves, but sheaves with nilpotent singular support such that EV acts as TV. So now let me kind of contrast the two theorems. So one is, so theorem of Drinfield and myself and the theorem of Nadler and Yun. So one can ask some very general question. Suppose you have an abstract category C endowed with a family of functors. So in one case, the functors will go from for every representation V rep J check to D modules on X, well, plus tensor compatibilities. So there's a functor TV. And in the other case, it'll be functors also TV, but so it'll be Betty, sorry, Betty local systems. And you can ask in both of these contexts, do these data gives rise to an action of quasi curian sheaves on the appropriate version? So this is Deram versus Betty on C in such a way that TV, TV equals EV. So the thing is that in the Betty context, this is true always, and it's a tautological theorem. And in the drum context, this is false for general C. And I don't know how to specify conditions on C. So it's a condition on C whether or not such an action of quasi co log states exists. And I don't know how to spell out, spell this condition out. And it's a pretty hard theorem of gentle of myself that we show that C being D modules on Bungi actually satisfies it. And the proof is kind of crazy. It goes through representations of fine algebras at the critical level. So it's really kind of non-trivial theorem. All right. Um, so this is the Betty context. And all of this was a preparation for the thing that we're really interested in, namely the Elabe context in which we can compare this theory with uh, Vincent Laforgue's theory, theory. And again, I want to pause for questions. So there was a question in the chat. Um, so the question is, why do we consider all quasi curian sheaves instead of locally free sheaves? So the, the category of quasi curian sheaves is, if you wish, the incompletion so of the category of perfect complexes. So in some sense, considering perfect complexes, namely per, uh, complexes that are locally expressible as, lo as complexes of locally free is sufficient. So the reason you want to consider uh, all quasi curian sheaves is that kind of you really want to have the idea of spectral decomposition. Like for example, you can take the skyscraper sheave at a point and consider the action by it. And this action, you can think of it as a spectral projector onto the given local system. 
So does, does that answer the question? All right, so would anybody else like to ask a question? All right, so and now let me pass to the elastic context. And so the main question there is what is log cis? And so the log cis here is really different from the both the ROM and the Betty situations in that so we don't really know how to deform elastic local systems in continuous families. Yet, one can give the following definition, and it's what I call loxus restricted. And this definition can be given in any shift theoretic context. So it's really, it produces a new geometric object that I'll call loxus restricted. And let me just say one more time, this definition can be given both, so for Durham sheaves, for Betty sheaves, and for Elatic sheaves, but in the Durham and Betty setting, it will produce a different object than the one we had before. So let me say what it is. So home from S, again, a fine test scheme to this Loxis G chip restricted is, again, symmetric monoidal functors just as before, but uh, with what kind of values? Uh, so we'll have, as before, quasi curious sheaves on S, but the question is, what do we put here? And if you think of the, if you want it to work in the elastic context, there is not much choice. What you have to do, you really have to take just a, the category of uh, well, I should write lease constructible. So, I mean, that's basically the only choice you have in the elastic context. But let's compare it. Let's contrast it to what we had in the um, in the Durham setting. So in the Durham setting, we replaced instead of sheaves that are constructible. So in the Durham setting, these are called holonomic D modules. We took all. We replaced it by all D modules, and you vastly increase the number of S points. And in the Betty setting. We replace sheaves that are lease and constructible, but just sheaves that are lease. So we get rid of the condition that the fibers of our local system be finite dimensional. And again, you vastly um, uh, increase the number of S points. So in both the ROM and Betty setting, so this locks is restricted. Uh, will be a very skinny subfunctor inside the big local systems. And what it does, you should think of it as follows. So basically, given the local system, what you're allowed to do, you're allowed to deform it either formally or in the unipotent directions. So, but you cannot vary irreducible local systems in continuous families. And you may think that this is kind of a dumb definition that it won't produce anything interesting, but in fact it does. So, so that's our geomet algebra geometric object. And as before, we have this EVX. So it's a quasi coherent sheep on it. So I should also warn that this is this log is restricted is not an algebraic stack, is a formal algebraic stack. You should think of it. So formal algebraic stacks relate to algebraic stacks as formal schemes relate to schemes. So it has this fluff of nilpotence around it. So, and there are these guys. Uh, tensor sheaves, so least constructible on X. And again, you can express the wish, but as we saw already in the Betty context, it's unreasonable to the wish to involve the entire category of sheaves and bungee. You can only talk about, if you want to have your wish fulfilled, you only want to talk about important ones. So 
question do we have an action of this quasi co loxis restricted check on sheaves with nilpotent single support So, but now you can ask, what do I mean by shift in nilpotent single support? So for Betty sheaves, I, I mentioned, so we have this theory of single support. It was developed by Kashivar and Shapira. So for D modules, there is a notion of single support. It was developed I think by Sato, the very dawn of the development of, of D modules. But now what about elatic sheaves? So, and the existence of well-defined single support had been conjectured for a very long time, but it was only recently, relatively recently in 2016 that Bellinson uh, proved that it actually exists and it's half dimensional, but in characteristic B, it's not necessarily Lagrangian, so, which is kind of an amazing thing. Yet, so one can talk about single support and one can talk about, therefore, it makes sense to think about, uh, talk about, Chief and Banji with nilpotent single support. So again, so that so we have that EV acts as TV, and the answer is yes. So and this is theorem from this paper of ours. There exists a unique action as above. And here, one again can ask the, a general question about faculty decomposition. Suppose I have a general category C equipped with a family of functors like so. So sheaves, and again, it's in any sheaf theoretic context. So least constructible. Next. So does it come from an action? of quasi co luxus restricted in general and the answer is yes and it's it's a theorem far more complex than the theorem in the general betty context but far less complex than and far less mysterious than in the drum context well in the drum context we didn't have a general theorem we only had the assertion that um this section this action exists for bungee all right so, so what I've done so far, I've done three things. In the categorical setting, I described what kind of spectral action we have in the Durham setting, what kind of spectral action we have in the Betty setting, and what kind of action we have in the elatic set, well, restricted setting, which applies to all three. And um, so in the restricted setting, we had, oh, by the way, when I write sheaves, so here, uh, I should say milk constructible. So the, here are the difference. Uh, so even if I'm in the big betty setting, I'm considering constructible sheaves. And on it, on them, we have an action of this quasi co is restricted. If you consider all sheaves in the potent single support, we have an action of the quasi co of the big loxis. Constructible means uh, finite, uh, finite dimensional fibers. So we have this three contexts for the Hecke action in the spectral decomposition in the categorical setting. And we still have the theorem of Vincent Lafort that we want to relate to this categorical setting, which I'll do in the remaining 10 minutes of the talk. But again, I would really wish that somebody asks me a question. Uh, Denise? Yes. Maxim, go ahead, please. Maxim? Yeah. Uh, I, I lost you. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? I cannot hear so well. Hello, hello? Maxim, yeah, did you yeah. have a question?
I don't know if Maxime wants to ask a question. I just am slightly, um, the connection is not so good. I think he got disconnected because it's not showing up I on see. the chat or in the participant list. Uh, I'll, I'll send him an email then. Yeah. So Maxime is asking, do you have a crystalline version? Here, I have to plead my ignorance. So I don't know. And there's something I really want to know. It's just, it's my ignorance about things crystalline. But I even, I'm ready to take a pledge of investigating this. Maybe you can do you hear me now? Uh, do you hear me now? I can hear you now, yes. Yes, yeah, so, so some sound questions, probably problems. Yeah, in fact, I think I have an answer in crystalline uh, situations. It's really less mysterious. This you know, uh, log system will be some germ of um, periodic analytic variety or, or analytic stack. And then you have action of Frobenius on itself, on this variety, contractic action and fixed points will be. Uh, uh, consider log system not on, on, on a curve, but curve over FP bar. Yes. Then, then it will be some finite dimensional, more or less uh, open analy analytic variety of periodic numbers. And then with Frobenius, it will be endomorphism of this guy. Yes. Yeah. And then that will be this, seems to be the story. At least six points will be exactly uh, Christ yeah. crystalline stuff. And and you can calculate, like, num you can count number of representations like Greenfield uh, does. It will be action of trace on finite dimensional cohomology of this guy. Yeah, so it will be pretty geometric. Yes. In fact, so something very related happens elastically, which which is my next phrase. Uh, yeah. But yes, but I mean, so I I do want to know about crystalline okay. story. I just don't know it. All right. So so now let me try to connect the elladic story, the sheaf theoretic elladic story with the arithmetic story. So I said that, so now we are, we're doing this log system arithmetic. Did you check? Sorry, restricted. But when we do sheaf theoretic theory, we stay over an algebraically closed ground field, FQ bar. And as Maxim just said, if your curve was defined over FQ, this thing carries an endomorphism an automorphism, which is the Frobenius, and we define so log cis arithmetic that I mentioned in the beginning. So I said that in Laforc's theorem, there's some algebra geometric object. So we define as a stack of fixed points. And here there's something to prove. So I said that the log cis restricted in general, it's a formal algebraic stack. And here a miracle happens. And it's kind of not, not a miracle, but it's, it's a pretty hard theorem that says that if you take Frobenius fixed points, all this formal stuff goes away. This log cis arithmetic is actually an honest algebraic stack, honest quasi-compact algebraic stacks and irreducible local systems. There are isolated points and then something kind of interesting happens and non-reducible local systems, which is responsible for the Eisenstein phenomenon. So what did we say? So over, FQ bar, we have this algebra geometric object, and we'd have the category quasi oh. This guy has oh. not a correct. I don't know what to do with it. So it acts on sheaves impotent on bungee. And this is the story of FQ bar, but the Probenius acts on the whole thing. And so what you can do now, you can perform the following operation. So if you have a category equipped with an endofunctor, you can take its category, you can take the trace. And such as a trace of operator on a finite dimensional vector space is a scalar. If you have a dualizable category, the trace of an endofunctor is a vector space, not necessarily finite dimensional. This operation is functorial. So if we can take traces of both sides. 
So, and if you take the trace of the symmetric monoidal category, you get a commutative algebra. So take the trace of the Frobenius on this quasi kiran sheaves on Loxis restricted. Now, omit this subscript acts as a commutative algebra on the trace of the Frobenius on the category of sheaves in potent singular support on Bungie. So now here comes a general observation that if you have a stack with an endomorphism, if you take the trace of this induced endomorphism of the category of classical sheaves, what you get, you get the algebra functions on the stack of fixed points. But as we just said, the fixed points on bunch on loxis restricted is exactly what we defined as loxis arithmetic. So, so the left hand side, left left hand. So left hand side is exactly the algebra that was in Laforgue's theorem. So let me see. Ah, it wouldn't even write. This app is terrible. So restricted. So this is exactly the algebra that it was in Laforgue's story. So this is gamma on loxis arithmetic of the structure sheet. So that's what Laporte called the algebra of excursion operators. And so what's the right-hand side? And here comes a pretty deep theorem, and it says the following. So what we're doing, we're considering the trace of the Frobenius that acts on the category of sheaves and potent singular support on Bungie. So in general, there is a Grothendieck a shift of function correspondence, and you can think of it as a map in, on any variety from the categorical trace of the Frobenius and the category of constructible sheaves to this face of functions. But this map is not at all an isomorphism. So let me just say it like this. So trace Frobenius sheaves on Y by any algebraic stack over FQ, of Q bar defined over Q, maps to functions on Y of Q. So this is Grothendieck's function to sheaf. But what you can do, we're doing the case when y is bungee, and we're taking the trace not on all category of sheaves, but specifically on the, on the category of sheaves with important single support. And then something miraculous occurs that if you embed this category into the entire category of sheaves and apply Grothendieck's map, this map actually becomes an isomorphism. So it's actually maps isomorphical to functions on bungee over Q. Say function with compact support. So it's a pretty deep, deep theorem. So this is uh, again, um, so it's the third paper in the series. And the upshot is that, so when you take this category, category collection, you take the traces of the Frobenius, you exactly see um, Laforgue's action. And so, and that's kind of what I wanted to explain. So, so Laforgue's action can be thought of as taking the trace of the Frobenius and something that comes comes from uh, something of categorical origin. And that can also kind of shed light on his construction, because as I said, his construction uses more than Heike operators. He uses this, what's called excursion operators. And you can see from this perspective where they actually come from. All right, so that's, what I wanted to say. Thank you very much, uh, Dennis. Uh, any questions? Yeah, sorry, Dennis, I have again questions. Yeah, it's Maxim. <laughs> yeah, all, all this. Uh, yeah, do you understand this algebra of Lafork? It's, um, it's, this is something tricky for uh, non -i kind of isolated representations, but it's just some of a copies of a field for a rigid one, yeah? Yes, at the end of the day. So yeah. it, yes, yeah. it's, it's exactly what you said. Yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. in fact, there was uh, something more uh, interesting, which uh, uh, happens. Uh, because when, uh, when I imagine that like Frobenius sectic on model space of local systems, especially in this crystalline uh, uh, version, uh, you have isolated fixed points, let's say, yeah, for this rigid systems. But then you get action on the tangent space. There are some eigenvalues of the Frobenius on the tangent space, which is a finite dimensional, like x, x from deformation theory of your 
local system, mm-hmm. namely. Can you yeah. play over the algebraic closure, over FQ bar? Oh, oh algebraic, yeah, over FQ bar, yes. yeah. yeah. Yeah, and uh, then uh, one can play with these numbers as well. And uh, yeah, there was something I think is uh, Eddie and uh, Langlands also came to. Uh, one can uh, take some, you can make sums over all uh, this is your local system over uh, fixed points, and to take uh, put denominators like in both formal fixed points uh, of determinant one minus section of, a, of the tangent bundle. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then it gets gets again looks like a trace of Frobenius on some algebraic variety. Yeah, and, uh, and then it's okay. It, it, can, can you say one more time? So again, so okay, just a second. So it's it will be you're producing a scalar, right? Yeah. And the scalar. Yeah, yeah, is, yeah, 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 yeah. I consider this elliptic uh, local C, which is invariant under Frobenius. Yeah. Yes. Now, now consider H one or. I mean, yes. Our gamma of, of my thing is endomorphism of this local system. Yes. And you get finite dimensional space on each Frobenius sect. Yes. Uh, and eigenvalues will be not equal to one. So take, take weight one over the term identity minus this, this guy. Okay. And sum up. And take sum, yeah. And then it will be again some nice uh, formula. It's instead of counting how many reducible representation, you get some another number, which also looks like trace of Frobenius some variety uh just, just okay i'm really interested just one second <laughs> sorry yeah okay yeah <laughs> sorry just i want to understand so you are purely on the galois side right you're not you're not you're not making assertions about the automorphic side right not at all yeah it's just about uh, Gal- yeah. galois side galois side yeah yeah and you're saying that uh so this number equals like equals to the trace of the Frobenius. Oh, for, in, in some finite dimensional commodity if you go to extensions with your finite field if they plug and larger sums Yes. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And I presume it's not difficult to figure out which technology is. Yeah. No, no, it's not a bit. It's, it's, uh, no, it looks like really um, uh, a coherent homology of, of this yes. what to be model space. Yes, yes. I mean, I'm some, some, co- some quantification of model space. Based, of on the, based on the bot formula, one can guess what kind of homology, whose homology. Yes, yes. Is. Yes, yes. Yeah. Now I'm asking: Does the scalar have an interpretation of the automorphic side? Yeah. No, it was uh, something by Frank Kellens, which it, which was a long, time ago, yes, like long time ago. Yes, long time ago. Yeah, ten years ago. Yeah, and yeah, my stuff was also my first stuff was also a long time ago. Yes, it's, 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 yes, but I did. So I didn't know. I, I know this paper, but I, I didn't know that was in there. So that's very interesting. Okay, I'll look. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the sixth. Let's see. Thank you, Max. Other questions? So in, in the in the work of Laurent Lafogue, there is this uh, restriction on both sides of the central character and the determinant being finite. And I was wondering, um, does that show up in any way? In, in you, mean, in, you mean in both Laurent and Vincent, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So that's just for convenience. So, so they wanted to do the case of non-semi-simple reductive loops. It, it was just a way to get rid of one infinity, but it's not really important. Okay. So, I mean, you can look at the, so it's like in, in the theory that I explained, take the case of GM and the curve being P1, you'll see exactly this kind of infinity and kind of fixed. Okay. Not, I mean, it's not an issue. Okay. I mean, sort of, because what I was wondering about is that, like, um, in, in the number field case, there is this, like, serious restrictions on both sides in order to get a correspondence right now. Like, right. And, and I was wondering if there is anything in, in this story that is, that is similar to that. So the function field case is blessedly, it works as is. Mm-hmm. So the, that's the kind of deceptive advantage of this world. But yes, we are, we don't have Fontaine Maser. But I mean, also like on the, on that on the automorphic side, there is like a important integrality condition on, in, in the number field. So, so no, I mean, like it, it really works as is in the function field case. <laughs> Uh, 
I, I was wondering if maybe, I mean, when there are like these different generalizations in the function field case, if eventually people come to something where um, it is more similar to the number field case in, in their so I don't believe so. You see, so these number field phenomena are linked to the or, to the Archimedean place. Mm -hmm. All of that is kind of is basically a discrete series at, at infinity, mm -hmm. and we don't have that. So this this so this integrality is 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 discreteness at infinity. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, thank like, you. The absence of the Archimedean place makes things a lot easier. Other questions? Um, I mean, if I can ask another one, um, like when you talk about an action of Q co of log, log cis, um, does that take into account the cohomology of EV? Well, first of all, everything is derived. So there is, yeah. There is no there's no assertion that I made that discards higher or lower cohomology, but so that said, EV is a vector bundle. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. No. So. So I mean, like, like, what does its cohomology look like, and that does that play a role in understanding the oh, actions? Yes. So. Uh, so derived global sections of EV is the following. It, so first of all. Okay, let me just write it. Let me just, maybe the other app. Oh, okay, it recovered. Okay, good. So, so EV lives in quasi co loxis restricted, but check. But so let's do something more interesting. Let, representation it will be representation not of g check but g check i times i copies and then this ev will live on least sheaves on the ith power of the curve just to make things more interesting so when you take its global sections along the, again this loxis so you take global sections along the first factor and you'll end up in just a least sheaf on well, I would say I should say in least sheaf on i power of the curve. So part of this whole paradigm, this is Stuka cohomology. So but to have Stuka cohomology, you need to input uh, a representation of i i copies of the group, and then you get a sheaf on x to the power i. And so cohomologies of these EVs encode exactly that. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot. Other questions? I mean, I should say arithmetic. Uh, if not, let's thank uh, Dennis again. And so let me just say that his talks will be posted on the IMSA website uh, uh, in one or two days. Thanks again, Dennis. And next week we proceed on uh, November uh, 16 and 17 at uh, 11 30 New York Times with uh, talks by Sergey Google on Not Invariance. Thank you very much for your participation and see you next week. Thank you, Dennis, once more. Thank you.